welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. As you can see, I'm in the card room. Uh, I'm relegated to the card room because, see the ladder there? There, which way? There it is. Uh, we are having another project done. My husband is a guy that thinks we always need to be having a project, but anyhow. Um, so I am in here trying to get everything recorded before the contractors get here. Otherwise you will hear drills and all kinds of noises while I'm trying to get this uh, recorded. And interesting, interestingly enough, if you could see the rest of this room, there is quite a bit of clutter. We are going to be talking about staging your house, getting ready to sell it. And one of the things is decluttering. Um, so as I look, you can't see it, but I can see the clutter. We would definitely have to do something with this room if we were gonna sell this house. So get ready. And I'm gonna to talk to you about getting your house ready to put on the market and not necessarily having to call in somebody to stage your house. Thing, very first thing, clean, 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 right? Um, it's amazing. And when you're an agent and you're walking through houses and you're taking people through, you see initial reactions all the time. Okay. And I see it myself. I do it myself, right? Make sure your house is clean and down to some detail things. Now I'm a little OCD. So there are things that bother me that probably wouldn't bother other people, but there are some simple things like make sure your rugs, if you have spots on your rugs, you know, it's not that hard and, and I get them too. And I'll walk over them, you know, for a month or so until I can't take it anymore. But if you're getting ready to sell your house and you've seen those spots and you're like, eh, it's not a big deal. You need to address them before you put your house on the market. There are rug cleaners out there. There are simple tricks. I use the the vinegar and baking soda thing, you know, to lift a stain. So there are all kinds of home remedies out there too that really work very well, but get those, those stains out and rent a steam cleaner if you need to. If you don't wanna pay somebody to come in, I've rented steam cleaners before. They work very well once you've gotten those, you know, bigger stains out. So make sure your carpets are clean. Um, another thing that people don't often think about, you know, when we were selling our last house, I did that, went around and got all the spots. Um, make sure that you have gone through and touched up paint things too. You don't necessarily have to repaint an entire wall if you have the matching paint still there. My husband's great with keeping the cans of paints. We had every paint that we had ever painted in the house. So he was really good at keeping that. So just go and do those touch ups. If you can't maybe paint a whole wall and if you decide you, you know, don't wanna paint the whole room, do an accent wall so that you can just work on one wall, but people will notice those. Or if you have white walls or lighter colored walls, get one of those Mr. Magic erasers. They are phenomenal. And go through and get those dark marks, you know, the black marks that get on your walls and get those off um, because people will notice them and they might not know they notice them, but they do. It gives them an overall sense of the house. And the last thing that I always tell people when I have sellers and I'm going through their house to try to help them get ready, your baseboards and the trim around your doors. When the baseboards are dirty or all nicked up, it makes the house look worn. If the trim around your doors is dirty, it's noticeable. And again, people might not really know what it is that they're sensing, but they just feel like this isn't clean and it turns them off a little bit. So those are easy things that, you know, just get Lysol and, you know, a uh, bucket of water and clean those door frames or baseboards. I don't mind painting, so I'll, <laughs> I'll paint the trim. If it's white, I'll just repaint it the baseboards, right? So those are things, very simple things that make your house, if everything's clean, look fresher and newer. The next thing is declutter. Now, <laughs> right? Maybe I should take that, but whatever. Um, but you declutter your house. When people go through a house, they are going to look in your closets. They are going to open up your pantry. So try to organize those things, right? So at your closet, I go through and I do, now I told you I'm a little OCD. I do my clothes by, you know, white shirts, 
to you know the different colored shirts i group them all together all the way to black i put my slacks together and i organized our closets when you know when we sold our house last so it looked nice and neat the shoes are organized so declutter and organize organizing is just as simple as making sure things aren't hanging out of your drawers let's say you have clothes in your drawer and you close it and there's a sock hanging out don't have that <laughs> hanging out make sure everything's tucked in and like i said they will look in your closets they'll look in your pantry um, so just make sure those spaces are, are organized. You might not be able to get rid of everything, right? You want to try to though, do your donating to Goodwill or to friends and family that might need something that you, you know, have. So you do want to get rid of the stuff that you're not going to take to your new house when you go. Um, I will give you a personal example. We're looking for, you know, we'd like to maybe someday retire to Florida and because of the warm weather and we were looking at places virtually with an agent down there and um, we saw some beautiful places, but two that we really thought we were going to love when she walked through, we noticed that the place just seemed uh, disorganized and there was clutter everywhere and there wasn't any att attention to detail and what it did to both my husband and I and even the agent you know we talked about it after was that um, that if they're not going to take care of those little details like they know somebody's coming to look at their house and there's stuff everywhere how well have they taken care of their house? Do they change their air filters? And, you know, do they pay attention to making sure things are dusted off and cleaned and sanitized? You, it's just one of those things. So even if you're not in the habit of doing that, when your house is on the market, make sure it's clean, make sure it's uncluttered and it's neat and tidy. Um, the other thing, big thing, and you will hear this from everybody is as much as you love the personal pictures, and they look great while you're in your home living in there. But you need to take those down. Because when somebody walks in a house, you want them to envision themselves there. And I know you've probably heard this a million times, but it's true. So when I go through a house with my potential sellers, I will say, you need to take that down. Now, if there's a picture, if there's a beautiful wedding picture, and it's kind of a hallmark piece that might be okay or if you have on your bed stand pictures of your kids and it's one or two pictures that's fine but too much of that starts to make starts to remind the buyer that they're walking through your house and you want them to feel like they're walking through what could be their house and so you need to take those personal items down you can move furniture around so let's say you look at your space and you're like this is small or it I don't like the way it looks or I want people to realize, you know, that this is this room, even though I have an open concept that this is where one room ends and the next one begins. I, I want to make this different. So start moving your furniture around, move your furniture around, make it and, and play with it a little bit if you can, you know, and try to open up the space or to whatever it is that you're trying to get if to make it look bigger or to define the rooms. Um, move your furniture around. Sometimes that in of itself will make it seem fresh and new to you. And it, you know, will give somebody walking through the house an idea of, you know, what to do with that space. Utilize the space that is in your house. What I mean by that is sometimes there is an area in your home where you've never really done anything with it. Um, and entryways are sometimes like this. We have a space that when you come in from our garage, there is a space there. And so put something in there, maybe um, a storage bench, where if you're coming in the house, you can take your shoes off and put it in the bench so the shoes don't sit there, or put um, uh, hooks on the wall where you can hang coats and things like that to open up space. So think about that. Um, you can also sometimes um, put floating shelves in. So let's say you don't have an office space. Office space is big right now because of COVID and people working from home. Let's say you're thinking to yourself, well, I kind of work in this little corner, but it's cramped and it's never really been great. Um, you could get floating shelves. There are shelves that you can actually put on the wall and they drop down and you can put stuff there for your office, put a little table there, and then somebody coming through is gonna go, oh, I could use this as, a, as an office and those floating shelves help. And that's not super expensive to do. 
Um, if you have a small bedroom, use day beds, right? So, or if you have a small bedroom that you didn't have anything in, maybe it was a nursery and your child has grown and you got rid of the furniture and it's sitting empty, throw a day bed in there. Uh, again, you don't, it doesn't have to be super expensive and it's something you can take with you that you might be able to use in your new home. But a day bed will give you uh, a function for that room, but it also can be a sitting area too. And so people can look at it either way. So a day bed is a nice thing you can do with some space to show how to utilize it. Um, let's talk now about just decorating ideas. So easy ones are throw pillows, get some throw pillows, or what I do is I have a lot of pillows. <laughs> I don't know how I accumulated so many pillows. I just buy covers and I happen to change them out for the holidays, right? We have a bench in our entryway and I just put different covers on the same pillows. But you know, if you don't want to go out and buy all new throw pillows, you can get four pillowcases, de you know, decorative pillowcases for like 16 bucks or whatever on Amazon, sometimes $13, $12, and get some covers and just cover up your existing pillow. And that's a great idea to change the look of your house, to add an accent color or whatever. And that's easy and that's cheap. Um, wall decor. Again, you're trying to do it not spending a lot of money. You can use decorative plates. Let's say you have fancy china. You can get a little rack, put that up and put the plates on that. And that can be wall decor. Um, you can go to places like Big Lots or Walmart and get some pretty cool things to put on your walls. You can also go to, you know, um, yard sales. You can go to secondhand stores and grab pieces of art there. And even, you know, they're not that expensive and you might keep them. You might find something you really love and then you can take it to your next house. But if you've taken down, let's say you've taken down a lot of the pictures of your family because you're depersonalizing and you're like, I need to put something on this wall. There are options out there that again, don't have to be super expensive and that will definitely make your house look nice. I use vases. Um, you know, if your husband or your wife or, you know, your friend gets you flowers and you have, I always keep the vases. And then I'm like, what do I, do? <laughs> what do I do with this vase? I have too many vases. So I will take it and I will put colored stones in it, or I will put, you know, flowers I'll go. And if I know the, for an open house, I'll go and get fresh flowers and I'll put fresh flowers in those. So you can use a vase for decorating and it doesn't have to cost you anything. You can use an empty wine bottle. Let's say you have, you know, a really cool wine bottle that you found or, or I don't know, some kind of bottle that you have already drank what was in there. And you can use that as a decorative piece and candles, candles, always just putting it somewhere next to a vase, you know, instead of just one, you know, put the, the vase and the candle next to each other and boom, you have a little bit of decoration. It's not too cluttered and it's not that expensive. Another suggestion is grabbing stuff from the outdoors. So let's say you have a beach house. Let's say you're lucky enough to live along the coast and you want to sell that house. Grab a vase, get some sand, put it somewhere where you need a decorative piece. Go get some seashells, put them in a bowl. If you don't live at the beach, let's say you live in the woods or in a woodsy area. Go grab pine cones, put them in a bowl. Um, if you live in California and you have oranges and lemons and all kinds of stuff, put those in a bowl decorate with that. <clears throat> if you live in the city, you might find a really cool rock, right? <clears throat> I don't know. It's possible. You might find wood, you know, and be able to look like driftwood or whatever, but you can go outdoors and just look around and, and of course flowers too, but don't pick somebody else's flowers, right? Um, you can make decorative pieces from things that you find outdoors and you'd be surprised at how much they warm up a home. Plants are always good and pretty easy. Now I'm not good with plants. They don't always survive very long with me, but if you are good at that, just put some plants out. 
uh, or cactus because they're easier that you know I don't kill those as quickly um, so those are ideas for decorating that don't cost a whole lot of money finally make sure that your house smells good and it's something that you might not detect <clears throat> because you live there so when your agent comes through and don't be offended if your agent says um, I can you know if you have a, a pet I can smell the dog or I can smell the cat and that is something you want to address because any buyer that comes through is going to any buyer that comes through is going to smell that same thing and it's it, it can you know be something that they're like Ugh. so you want to make sure and if you have a pet you want to get those carpets clean that is something that you would want to spend the money on to clean it or go and rent a cleaner yourself but you want to get those pet odors out um, you can also you know you don't always realize it but if you're having a viewing the next day <clears throat> don't make something really stinky for dinner I'll give you an example we did the seven fishes for Christmas this year my husband's Italian <clears throat> Our house smelled like fish for a couple of days. So you wouldn't want to do that and then have an open house or know that you have people coming through looking at your house because it's just something that has to get out of, you know, the house over time. Yes, you can burn candles and things like that, but that certain smells just stick. So you want to make sure that you address those. The other thing you might not be aware of is drains. Make sure that your drains don't stink. Sometimes... Uh, if there's, you know, a sewer backup or if it's clogged or it's starting to get clogged, the shower will hold a smell. Kitchen drains, if you have a disposal, make sure you plink it. If you've ever never used that, you drop that little bead in and it makes it smell nice. There are all kinds of things you can do. Make sure you clean your washers and dryers because if they're sitting open, sometimes they have an odor and you just want to make sure that you don't have any of those negative things in your house when someone comes through. And none of those costs a whole lot of money. Staging. Yes, you should think about staging. Do you have to hire somebody? Not necessarily. You can do it on your own. Thanks for coming. I will see you here next week. Make sure you subscribe at the bottom of the page. And please tell your friends if you like what you're seeing here. Please tell your friends and have them come and visit too and subscribe. Have a great week. I will see you next Friday.